live now. <clears throat> Sending out the tweets. Welcome everybody. <clears throat> For those of you watching the VOD. Doing a painting video. <clears throat> I had uh, the Warhammer 40k Space Marines Assault Intercessors in paint set. This is another paint set. I got um, the uh, Stormcast Eternal Strages Sigmar. A very similar set. You know, they're really around 30 bucks. Picked up from my LGS a while ago with the intent to paint. Haven't painted it yet, and I'm just going to go start to finish here with you guys. Um, so this is going to be different than a lot of the kind of the other painting stuff I've done because a lot of it, actually, well, what painting stuff have I done on camera? Because a lot of stuff I do off camera is like whiz kids and stuff, which doesn't require priming or assembly. Um, but this is going to require all that. You can see it's still sealed. So we're going to go through the uh, the assembly. You know, I got the tools here, and it actually doesn't require glue. <coughs> They're all the push fit pins you can see there. Look at this, uh, the assembly here. But how I'm gonna do this today is I'm actually going to, I'm gonna paint this as is. <clears throat> At first I was like, how do I wanna paint this? Do I wanna paint one blue and then one orange and one green, kind of like how I did the terrain? But I think I'm gonna paint them as is and I think I'm gonna keep this very basic color. Kind of going, uh, trying to see how fast I can paint this because if I yeah, I don't have an army for the Warhammer game yet. It's a, it's a hobby that I, I developed interest in through the pandemic and so I have not been able to play a war game in person but if I do you know if this does if I do find that this is something that I want to pursue from more than a painting aspect and, and I want to actually play the war game Warhammer um, <clears throat> I'll need a whole army so I want to see how kind of how fast I can paint these from like a, a table ready standpoint in, in case the time comes where I need to paint a bunch of them I painted that whole goblin army for Dungeons and Dragons months and months ago when I was kind of you know getting back into the painting hobby and I want to just kind of see where that is from a from a speed standpoint so you know you can see that this this kit comes with all the colors that are here it comes with uh, that we're gonna use to paint the figure here which is great I mean, it's a great value because these are all the Cit Citadel paints I think there's a wash in here too and it actually comes with a paintbrush it's like for 30 bucks so that's not bad so let's go ahead we're gonna go ahead and open this and we're gonna get started start to finish you're looking at assembly followed by painting I think I have everything here it's been a while since I streamed painting so uh, I think I got everything right I got my brushes I got my tools I got the wet palette already and I have the uh, cup for water I almost forgot that <laughs> and then um, yeah I think we're ready to, uh, to start the show here. so these should come in sprues question mark that I have to snip out although what I will do <clears throat> all right yeah look at that <clears throat> what I will do is I'll prime them first though all right so box over there <clears throat> here's the paintbrush it comes with it says Citadel Citadel starter brush um, I think that this is pretty much in, in every kind of paint set so you know it's not the best brush but it's always nice to have a fresh one because a lot of these are getting uh, getting nasty <clears throat> and this is it <clears throat> that is really tight that is really compact for a sprue you know three space marines here all in this one sprue you know I, we were doing the terrain and we were doing um what else were we doing um <clears throat> the goblin army it was just sprues everywhere it was like prime everything hey what's up play snake reptiles do you have the water cup and the coffee cup that you'll mix up and end up drinking paint water yes i do actually so uh, this is turned into my painting cup here i have the this is actually a glow in the dark death note coffee cup that I got from a loot crate and it used to be my you know that 3 p.m. cup of coffee at work when you really shouldn't have coffee anymore I would always pour it in this mug um, but this uh, you know since working from home this has evolved into uh, into my painting mug just because it's fun to look at it's fun to have in the background I think the way I have the camera set up you might not see it too well but we might shift things over as stuff goes on what's hey, hey Tony what's going on diarrhea and Frank you made me say that name out loud. All right, so here are the bases, which uh, looks like, yeah, it push fits into the bases too, which is pretty cool. And then let's go through the paints here. The Citadel paints is going to last you a long time, which is great. I mean, depending on how much you're painting, you know, like I have not, uh, I have not gone out of a Citadel paint yet since I started painting, uh, picking painting back up again in like August of this year. So we have the McCrag blue. That's going to be the main color, the blue here. Oh, this is the Astro Granite, which is like a grayish kind of silver. Oh, that's so cool. I don't have one like these yet. I have the uh, gunmetal that came with the Ogre Zombie paint kit. 
but it's like really metallic and i think that this one's going to be nice to have them add to my collection uh agrax earth shade much thinner this is a wash so we're going to apply to the end belt is our gold <clears throat> a little darker than the uh the other gold that i have and that i used for the stormcast eternals <clears throat> so that's good to have a different variation gonna work on my model while you do this and pretend we are hanging out <laughs> all right man sounds good <laughs> that sounds good yeah paint along with me whatever you're working on all right we have abaddon black here but <clears throat> i don't want to crack this one just yet i have an abaddon black that uh came in another paint set so we're going to be using this abaddon black for now and uh, this one is going to stay fresh and unopened <clears throat> and then oh wow this one really needs to be shaken up <clears throat> this is the corax white Ooh, there we go <clears throat> corax white right here It'll be nice to have a, a Citadel white because, uh, you know, I picked up, oh gosh, what is it? Hold on. Reaching to my paint drawer here. Are you hiding? Might be hiding. Oh, this is the other gold I have, the Retributor armor. So you can see there's kind of a, is this a, yeah, a little, little difference, which is kind of nice. This one's definitely more like a look at me. Hey, Kristen, what's going on? <clears throat> Boozy baby, off topic, want to let you know I love the Speedle podcast. Hey man, thanks. I, uh, <clears throat> I've done three so far. I recorded those three pretty much in like a two-day period, and uh, I haven't had the time to record um, too many others yet, but I have a, you know, we I got a list of, of guests coming on, you know, I want to have a Lamb Lion on, um, I want to have Justice on, and, uh, you know, I've been talking to those guys, so more to come on the podcast, that stuff's, a, that stuff's a blast to do, I just talk forever, you know, is it a bad thing? Maybe. Um, yeah, so Corax White, because, where is it? Come on. Ooh. Here it is. Yeah, I just bought this matte white from the Army Painter. And it's like, it's fine. It's like really, you know, needed it to kind of make some things lighter and, and play with my highlights, but really nice to have this uh, this Citadel Corax white here. So that's all the paints that come in the set. And then here's the baby sprue that, I mean, honestly, I don't know what I was expecting, but I, for some reason, I thought this was gonna be uh, a lot more. I guess that I have uh, <clears throat> still a lot to learn with this. So I'm gonna prime this first. That's what I forgot. I need the little baby hair dryer. Where is my little baby hair dryer? Because I need, I'm not gonna waste time watching this dry. All right, here we go, guys. Introducing the little baby hair dryer. It says key to my heart. All right, so we're gonna be using this to speed some process up. I will try not to uh, have this on right in front of the mic. <clears throat> it just plugs into, come on. All right, testing. Oh, okay, we're working. <clears throat> so this is not this is not primed. Watching paint dry is seventy percent of the hobby. Yeah, I know I cheat. I like to cheat. I uh, <clears throat> sometimes I feel like these videos can be long already. I think I want to speed up the process of the drying. So <clears throat> we have our sprue, and I'm gonna prime it. Um, <clears throat> I have the two dollar uh, black primer here, and the two dollar white primer from Home Depot. I find that it's worked well. For everything I've had to prime so far and what I usually do is I spray a pretty good coating of black over it and then a dusting of white to kind of get that gray kind of like what we're seeing here and now all right let's see if I so obviously I don't want to I don't want to prime it in this room <clears throat> um, and I thought about that and here's what's gonna happen can we uh, can we tilt this up get a little insight to uh, the rest of my setup here but check this out oh yeah open that window right up you can see the snow is still out there it's been like, that snow's been out there for like three weeks. <clears throat> Says it's supposed to be 40 tomorrow though. All right, so. <clears throat> you get to watch me turn my back and I have the microphone over here. I don't have the headset on today. So you're gonna not hear very well. Um, well, I give this, a, give this a prime and start with the black. Let me know how the volume is with the uh, background audio. It's, uh, <clears throat> I tested these levels, but. Sometimes it's, yeah, sometimes it's, the levels are different when I have the microphone it's standing over here. All right, so we're gonna get started. Okay. Do not drop this in the snow. You can drop it on the table, I guess that's fine. Well, this mat has seen paint already, so. Looks good. All right, we got a prime black here. 
<clears throat> Kabuzi baby watching from Arizona. Haven't seen snow in years and loving it. Yeah, there you go. Look, my, my neighbor's still got his winter lights out, um, which is great because that helps me find my house when I'm driving in the, in the snow at night. I'm coming home. All right, let's get our white out. Yeah, Kabuzi, I was in I was in South Florida. Um, I'm from here originally. This is upstate New York, but I lived in South Florida for the past five years. I moved up here in May, uh, so the snow was a harsh reminder of what I came back to. But you know, I like it. All right. Hmm. All right. So, uh, yeah, some places are a little white, <clears throat> um, but we got mostly gray here. As a couple, I think that that was that that chest piece looks a little white, but we'll work with it. We'll work with it. Okay, it's freezing. All right, <clears throat> let's uh, well, let's hair dry this. <clears throat> <clears throat> shouldn't hear that hair dryer for a while all right let's get the camera back down to the zone the painting zone <clears throat> place snake we get snow for months on end yay oh gosh where months on end i mean we get it i don't know where you are but we got it uh what, like october to may i don't know it's been a while for me i'm gonna remember harshly i'm just starting to get over it you know it's fun around the holidays but now we're in mid-February I'm like all right is this gonna is this gonna go away all right so I'm gonna call these pieces out <clears throat> actually while I'm not using the to swipe my brushes let me just put it right here <clears throat> did I throw away instructions oh you know what it's so simple that these are the instructions on the back makes sense oh god so now we get to watch me not mess this up which is like how simple could this be right all right so here comes the part where okay we gotta snip all these out I have to improve on my my sprue snipping speed. And you know a lot of, what a lot of people do. Um, actually, I should have that knife somewhere. Because what you do is you know you, you cut this out. You know, so here's the backside of one. You cut this out, and <clears throat> where the sprue snips. You can see that there's, you know, it's never, a, it's not always a clean snip. And so you got like a little box cutter and you can kind of shave that. Do I have one here? No, I don't think so. <clears throat> Maybe we'll just, uh, we'll trim the edges that we see look like they need a little trimming. Southern Alberta, Canada. Oh man. Yeah, that sounds cold. Southern Alberta, though. <clears throat> Everybody I know in Canada has snow forever. <clears throat> I got um, <clears throat> I got a friend on was it what's the island that's like an hour and a half time difference from from Eastern Prince Edward or whatever. That guy gets snow all the time. <clears throat> I got another couple people near Quebec or Quebec. Come to the states in Arizona, it's 70 degrees out. Oh, thanks, man. <clears throat> Got the Zelda shirt. It's uh, <clears throat> so this was actually uh, this shirt that I'm wearing is a Zelda shirt, and I actually got it I don't know years ago at Hot Topic, and it was technically a costume piece, but it's like a dry fit athletic shirt, so I just wear it. <clears throat> the problem with that though is half and half. Um, <clears throat> I get confused with like somebody's like, oh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, nice. I'm like, yeah, you know, I don't correct them. What do I snip here? Hmm? Oh, this is the this is the pin. All right, let me. Well, better to not snip enough than snip too much, I suppose. 
Come on. These numbered? <clears throat> they are. Before I keep snipping, let's see. <clears throat> let's assemble it one by one. <clears throat> Alright, so one. Oh gosh, you're about to watch um, a nightmare of assembly. One, two, and three. Who would have thought? Alright. Have I snipped two and three yet? Yeah, I, I, I might have primed over the numbers, but that's fine. Um, three. I mean, I guess what you, you could do is you could prime them once they're assembled, which isn't bad either. I've heard that priming the sprue kind of decreases the chance for you to to miss a spot that wouldn't be primed that could give you a problem. Oh boy. That one says 9380, that doesn't make sense. No way, I think we're looking at this wrong. All right, what if I go by look? <clears throat> um, all right, we're looking for left leg, half of a shirt and the gun coming out. Actually, you know what? That's this one. Hey, look at that. <clears throat> All right. Or is that the right? Yeah, 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 that's right. <clears throat> All right. Oh, boy. Okay. Don't tell me. That goes in and then... Oh, I see. Oh, I see. This is like the shoulder pad. Ugh. It's like a little... Alright, okay. So, here's the head. And then <clears throat> this peg goes in here. Okay, here we go. Oh, that does not look right. <clears throat> this peg goes in here. That's what it is. This is the shoulder pad. And then I lose my head. All right. Maybe I should have assembled these first. Nah, nah, nah. This is have the fun, right? All right. So I need that head to stay there. This is in. All right. <clears throat> this pushes in like that. Okay. We got a little person coming. I need four, five, and six. I mean, it makes sense. So I know this guy doesn't have a. This guy have a buzzer. <clears throat> this actually might be five. <clears throat> yeah, it is. So four is a leg, and then six is like a back piece. Here's four. Okay. At least I know that in the VOD. A lot of people, like people that watch the VOD, they've probably clicked off at this point, so I can be embarrassing. But for the people watching live, I love you guys. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Four is a foot. It goes right here. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay. And uh, five's here. Is it? Which, which, what's the angle here? Oh, it's 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 downwards. It's kind of like this, I suppose. Is that right? Yeah, I get, yeah, that does look right. And then six kind of comes in the back here, so you, you can see we have some. Uh, we're almost here with one. <clears throat> All right, looking for six. What is that? Um. Yep, should not have primed over the uh, the numbers. Here's six. Yep, 
Yeah, we can clean. <clears throat> we can clean that up a little bit there. Okay. Clean that up. <clears throat> All right, and this should pop right on the back. And that's uh, there's one guy. Pretty. These are pretty neat. The only other Warhammer of stuff, stuff I've painted, really, has been Age of Sigmar, which is like, for those of you who don't know, that's essentially Warhammer, but you know how Warhammer's always, like, everyone thinks Space Marines and things like that. Age of Sigmar is basically the fantasy version of that, so it's like swords and stuff. <clears throat> so I painted those, and I've painted terrain, but I have not painted, um, I haven't painted any of this kind of mecha suit stuff, which is cool. All right, and then the foot pops onto the base. Does it matter what base? I don't think so. Oh, definitely <clears throat> got to clean up the snip first. And let's see it. Ha-ha! All right, we got one. <clears throat> the show can go on. Is he supposed... Yeah, 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 yeah. That looks good. That looks good. It's actually... The head is actually supposed to be tilted that way. Isn't that crazy? I actually did that right. All right, seven, eight, nine. Uh, luckily, seven is the next head I cut out, so now I need eight and nine. <clears throat> looks like um, <clears throat> looks like this one's fifteen. So I need. Oh yeah, you can't see the instructions here. You can see. Hey Jack Danger, welcome to the show. You are watching. Um, you are watching me attempt to assemble these. We got one though. Looks good. All right, he's right there. Um, 79. <clears throat> Where is 8 and 9? This might be 8. This is 9. All right, let's cut that out. Wow, I swear to God, guys. <clears throat> we were very close to me just cutting all these out and then being like, oh, no. <clears throat> and then me, like, trying to, like, figure out and scramble and figure out what the pieces are and that would be that would be an absolute nightmare talk about just what do you so okay that was nine we need eight <clears throat> which luckily you know the prime covered the numbers but the numbers are like they're thicker they're, they're kind of sticking out there so i can see them here's eight Okay. Uh, one of these snips was bad. Yeah, this one. Yeah, clean that up. Clean that up right there. Okay. 789. So nine's going to snap into eight with the head just there. All right, so it's going to look like... <clears throat> these are it's tough. Uh, it's going to look like this, and then, but I need the head there. <laughs> so the heads, it's cool. I, it's really hard to see. But there's like a little, you see there's like a little stump at the bottom of the head, like a little base. It's to kind of keep the head, that's really smart of them, it's to lock the head in place. So it's not like you just plop a head down, you know. Alright, I'm also real close to the mic, so, you know, if you guys, a little ASMR here, real close. And please, please just push in as intended. Always, always... I'm still not sure how hard to push on these things, you know? I feel... All right. Come on. Yeah. You got to push hard on this one. So, all right. We got him in, like, mid-jump. Uh, 10, 11, and 12. 10 is an arm. 12 is, like, a kneecap. Really? And Like, a kneecap? Oh, my God. Yeah, that's 12 right there. This this little thing. Why? Why is there a kneecap? Oh, well, you know, there is a hole where his knee is, I guess. Why not include the kneecap on that other piece? <clears throat> I sound like a 40-year-old at Ikea. All right, well, at least this is... Guys, turns out, once you assemble one, and as you assemble the second one, the pieces get easier to identify. You know why? Because there's less pieces. 
little kneecap. All right, everybody, here comes the kneecap. Wait, which way is it facing? Okay, the little um, the little armor piece is facing up. Okay, so push that in, and he's got his little look at that. But the niece is like a little Captain Falcon over here. And ten, which shoulder up, kind of like this. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, he's like got a grenade, and he's got like a little buzz sword. Pretty cool. And now put oh 11 11 so they all have like jet packs that's what the last pieces are does it really matter i don't think so uh but this one's 11. and then after this guys i can deduce that the rest of these pieces belong to our third guy and i don't want to say i'm a pro but I put together two of these, and I think I know the uh, the loose anatomy of a space marine, where uh, that last one might be pretty easy. Put the jetpack on. Also, you know, let's do this here. This is the jetpack that I actually spray painted that very white, but that's the one that's facing his back, so that's nice. So you see, like, really nice kind of gray dusting from the priming, which is what we were going for. That's really nice. And put them in. The, these pegs that go into the base are kind of hexagonal. So it's like, I don't know, I think it's just kind of a nicer. Oh, actually, well, <clears throat> yeah, I guess he's, he's kind of like dashing off. Dashing off. Although, you know what? I, I feel like we can put them. You know what? Let's leave them. <clears throat> if we want, we can readjust them. But actually, that'll make painting the base much easier, which is nice. So we got two guys primed and ready. And then just for the sake of the instructions, let's uh, let's go piece by piece here. So 13, 14, 15. <clears throat> this is 15. 14 is a chest piece and 13 is a head. Here's the head. Oh. And the chest piece. All right, so head right here, and then chest plugs in here. You just gotta push. Line it up. Come on, there we go. And push it in, oh, there we go, okay. And 16 and 18 <clears throat> are these pieces, and then the jetpack is uh, 19 or 17, whatever. We're at the end. We can almost start painting. That'll be great. Be a little less embarrassing. Should definitely gonna got a practice assembly. This is good practice, actually. Oh, this is put weird on the sprue. There we go. All right, we did it. Whole sprue's done. All right, what is this? This is like a, oh, this is the other foot, okay. So, the, oh, look at that. All right, so see, this is actually super diagonal and it slides in like this. Um, come on, push, and yeah, cause he's kind of like, he's got a bent there, pretty cool. <clears throat> Kabuzi, Rook, should I start up this hobby? I'm afraid Speed Duels is going to die off me without Yu-Gi-Oh again because I ain't playing Kermeta. I ain't either. Although I did watch an Ice Barrier video from my, my buddy Golden Nova did one <clears throat> just because I saw that the Star Decks came out and I had a sudden nostalgia for Trish and Brio because they wrecked, my, they wrecked me in 2011 and I was like, do I want to, do I want to like, is this going to be a deck where I can buy three of them and like be roguish? But then that, that thought fleeted, was fleeting. <clears throat> and then I remembered that I didn't want to play Yu-Gi-Oh. <clears throat> um, Speed Duels. Yeah, I've said it before. <clears throat> I hope there's new product. I think there will be. I'm, I'm fairly sure there will be. 
uh, there is a there is like a just a piece of me that thinks that this is it but I I'm pretty sure that there will be new stuff I might do a video like a standalone video on, on what I think should, is next and what should come next um, but if you want to pick up this hobby so you know what to be honest to somebody that says should I pick up this hobby um, it depends on what you're looking at if you're picking it up from a painting perspective to get better, you have people that play, you have people that play D&D and they want stuff painted and you can be like that guy that paints stuff like I'm quickly becoming, then yes. <clears throat> Minis are expensive, paints are expensive, the equipment's expensive. This this kit was like 30 bucks, so I would consider that expensive. Um, <clears throat> each of these at a local game store is five, six bucks a pot. It lasts you a long, long time, <clears throat> but still, you know, you think about Speed Duel, relatively inexpensive format. Um, if you, if you want to pick up this hobby because you want to play the game, you want to build them, paint them, and play, I would say no, just because it's this is like, you can't remote war game. It sounds like too much of a pain, you know? <clears throat> but if you want minis to paint and put them on your shelf and just get better at painting, then yeah, man, definitely. At least, you know, it's worth up. That's why exactly this paint set <clears throat> for 30 bucks, gets you these three guys these six paints which lasts you a while it's everything you need to paint these guys and it gives you a starter brush <clears throat> you could buy this set alone and try it see if you liked it and if you didn't then you know no harm no foul you spent 30 bucks for an experience you have some cute painted things put on your shelf which you know space marines look cool um <clears throat> and if you do like it well then you know i'm, I'm so sorry because you have just uh tripped into uh, uh, one of the rather more expensive tabletop hobbies, which congratulations, you know, like I said, I, I'm not, I haven't played it. I haven't played the war games yet because I started this hobby. I, I got back into the painting during COVID. So I, you know, there's nobody to play with, but I was painting cause I was painting for my local game store, just games, Rochester, which I've done stuff for them in the past. <clears throat> and then I was painting for friends and I'm painting D and D stuff. And now I'm, I'm painting these and I'm actually going to kind of stay true to the color here because I want to go. You know, usually I try all sorts of wacky things with colors and highlights, and this time I think I want to just paint them as is, just to see kind of like get the get a sense of the speed. Where if I do want to do war gaming or even like a skirmisher, where it's like less intimidating, you know, it's like maybe twelve of these guys instead of like freaking forty, um, <clears throat> I get experience in kind of just slapping the paint on them, getting them ready to play. <clears throat> that was a long answer to your question. I. I I think I answered it. Should I start up this hobby? Yes, if you just want to paint. No, if you want to play the actual game. That's the short answer. Where did I put my water? Did I fill it and then not bring it back here? Hold on. Be right back. Here it is. Okay. All right, we are done assembling. We can actually paint now. Good thing that I sent out the... I, I tweeted it out, and I said... At first, the tweet was like, I'm painting these. But then I was like, wait. How much of this is going to be assembly? Uh, maybe I'll say that I'm assembling them, too. <clears throat> All right, so... Got our brushes. <clears throat> Put the brushes over here. Put the brushes over there. Wet palette right here. Actually, maybe we want the wet palette over here. I'm trying to think of the camera. Yeah, here we go. And then we have all of our paints. <clears throat> all these came in the set. We're going to paint them all blue. We're going to paint them all blue. I got my little standy thing. And uh, let's just get started. I shouldn't have thrown that box away over there because I, I want to follow the scheme. All right, yeah. So this is the Citadel base holder, 10 bucks. Changed my life. <clears throat> At first, I was like sticking them on dowels and it's just worth 10 bucks definitely worth the 10 bucks all right um yeah it's like literally so simple because like when i did the age of sigmar stuff and the, and the terrain there were like step-by-step -step instructions and like sheets in the box this is so simple that literally everything's here there's it just like bam like colors go you know it's mostly blue we're gonna see kind of the gold highlights on the on the sigils we're gonna see the white on like the little arm tattoos Black on the buzz saws and the gun tips. Gold, or on the guns. Gold gun tip. <clears throat> Where is, oh, Astro Granite's just the base, <clears throat> which is the gray. And then we got the Agri Surf Shape, which we just kind of, we just kind of slap on over it. And you'll see how that wash works, for those of you that haven't seen <clears throat> the wash before. 
it essentially just kind of like fills in much lighter much uh much more fluid it just kind of fills in the cracks and creates natural shadow it's people call it skill in a pot so let's go ahead and get started for real this time all right so we have our mccrag blue and i have my wet palette here and for those of you that first time kind of watching the painting process the wet palette naturally thins the paint because if you put it right out of the pot Citadel pots, you know, it's sitting in a Citadel pot can make it kind of chunky. You pull it right out of the pot and put it on a mini, especially if it's something very, very detailed. You have a, you have a chance to, you know, glob over some of the detail. So that's why there's a wet palette. You know, if you don't have a wet palette, you can certainly, you can make one with just like parchment paper and paper towel and like a Tupperware thing, which is what I did in like my first painting video. Or you can, um, <clears throat> or you just kind of like dip your brush into water lightly first before you, before you put it in the pot. Um, all right, we're gonna get started, and don't need those anymore. <clears throat> so, looking at a base coat here, don't really, really even really need to paint the uh, <clears throat> the buzz saw though. Typically, you know, you just base coat whatever the, the most prominent color is. Base coat your model with because uh, that way you, know, you try and do it like a paint by numbers piece by piece. There's less of a chance to uh, leave any piece of gray or the primer sticking out if you did that. Um, as, a, as opposed to if you just kind of coat the whole thing in the primary color and then paint over with the specific stuff. But I don't think we need to get a, the, the blade and everything. Yeah, you're gonna use a lot of the blue here. Actually, what color is that? Yeah, jetpack's blue too. And the what that we're gonna make these what they call table ready. So not trying to be fancy. We wanna because did you know that in Warhammer you can actually lose points if your pieces aren't painted or like painted to a certain quality. I say quality, but like really there's I mean it's just gotta be painted. Yeah, so you can actually lose points. So what a lot of people do, there are a lot of people that like to play the war game, but they don't care for painting. You know, even though I, I personally love it. I mean, it creates kind of that special... Think about one of these units on the field, and you're like, oh, I remember trying to get around your back with that freaking gold, and you are just... I spent so much time with you, I don't want you to die. But there are a lot of people that are like, no, I just like war gaming, <clears throat> or I'm picking up the skirmish, and uh, they'll go on, like, a website to have the pieces painted, and there are different qualities of commission paint you can do and one of them is just table ready where they just slap they slap the space marine blue on give them the you know the little pieces like we're, we're going to do today and then ship it out to you and then you know you can also do higher quality stuff all right yeah, this is going to be kind of a pain as i make sure that i get every looking cranny here but uh if you guys have any more questions for me about painting speed duel anything drop them in just chat while we do this with oh, the heads a little wobbly oh the head moves probably not as intended probably not probably might want to push that. we'll push that in a little bit more when it's dry <laughs> and i know i'm going to miss a spot with, with this blue <clears throat> i think that what i'm going to do is when this one's done with the blue i'll switch units so then that way by the time i'm done with the third unit this one's dry and ready for the next steps which really isn't that much, which is kind of great. I'm I'm so used to doing like like back and forth six different colors. Like I kid you not. Like what did I do? What did I do the other day? Um, <clears throat> oh, half orc druid for Dungeons and Dragons. Do I have that? <clears throat> yeah, this one. Two different kinds of brown. Uh, come on, I want you to see that one there. Two different kinds of brown, like a purple silver cape. Um, hello? Like the bat, the horns, the green, it's like a green skin. No, it's green tunic, gray skin. Yeah. Not, don't have to deal with all those colors. Blue. That's a color. And that's the color we use. This actually kind of looks like the, uh, it's not quite the Rook's Table Blue. But I do like this blue. Yeah, 
and I think that we're just about done with this one. It's just, you know, it's, I'm going to find little spots. Or, like, look at the, the, the back of this arm. <clears throat> We've been following Steed, Speed Duel TCG prices. Last week, I was looking to pick up two Dark Red Enchanters. They were 20 bucks each. Now they are 6 Dude, I can't believe... I am literally tomorrow at 11 <clears throat> is my Market Watch video. You hit the nail right on the head. I recorded something yesterday. So for those watching the VOD, this will probably come out the following Saturday. So for those watching the VOD, it was the one that came out on Monday. Um, I actually didn't see Dark Red Enchanter when I was doing my video. A lot of my update was like, holy crap, these cards weren't worth anything, and now what's happening? Why are they worth so much, you know? Dark Red Enchanters went down. Oh, you know, I did notice that Spear Kariba went down. So that was the most expensive card in the format. And uh, at like 15 bucks. And now it's like six. I mean, it did get reprinted. But um, you know what's the most expensive card out there that you could pull from a pack? Not talking about tournament pack, not talking about something that comes in the Battle City Box or in a you know, structure deck. It's actually, as of my TCG Player Market Price research that I did a couple days ago, it is actually King of the Skull Servants, Arena Lost Souls. King of the Skull Servants is 20 bucks. Second highest is Parasite, it's 17 18 And then what else is 17 18? Magician of Black Chaos. Although you look at eBay and it's all, you know, it's like you got one going for 18, you got all the rest going for, it's like they're all going for like 25, but then somebody just undercut people. It's always hard to get those numbers right, but it's pretty wild. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah you read my mind, dude. You got any other uh, video, <laughs> got any other video ideas for me? Because uh, they're probably coming. All right, this guy's done. I don't need to. I'm going to leave that buzzsaw gray because, you know, we're going to do the black there. But that's actually looks much lighter on camera, but um, <clears throat> it does look much lighter in this camera. Do it. Focus, please. Focus. All right. Well, it's, it's blue. There's our blue first marine. Wow. This, I, I, I literally practiced putting stuff behind the, the minis so that they would come into focus. And now it's uh, all that practice was for nothing. But we got our first one done. Ooh, and as I take it off, uh, just one more piece here. And that's it. <coughs> one done. Next one. Grenade guy. They have a grenade color? Oh, well, actually, the, the box only shows the, actually, that one that I painted um, <clears throat> as an example. So I guess we can just kind of figure it out. Grenade would obviously be green, right? I have a green. We can grab a green. All right. Also, for that uh, that Market Watch video, I apologize in advance. I don't know what kind of mood I was in, um, but I filmed that. It's a, it's a face video. And I filmed it, like, in my barn in, like, a hoodie. Like, and it's way too bright. <laughs> it's just it's just so different. And uh, I don't know how it's going to be received, but I hope it's good. I hope it's good. I'm hoping to do more kind of, like, talking at you videos, but, like, in weird locations. Also, I got to do more. I uh, got a couple other deck profiles I've been meaning to get out. That I gotta fix up. You know, all that good stuff. Wow, I'm gonna need more blue on this palette. But, like, the blue that I put on the palette here, <clears throat> um, it's like not even like an eighth of what's in that pot, you know? I actually am I'm used to putting way too much paint on the palette and then because I, I always paint things that require like six different colors and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, <clears throat> um, I guess I wasted all this because this figure is done and I don't have anything else I want to paint this color. I don't want to put this in the fridge. So I guess this is it. It's usually not that much, but wow, this head's a little wobbly too. I don't think they're supposed to wobble. We're going to press these in a little better <laughs> once we're dry.
Yeah, actually, good thing that that little stumps there on the head because if these kind of these kind of brush strokes would just pull it right out. Actually, I wonder if this is going to need a second coat. You know, one thing I've learned and found from Citadel, and actually one of the reasons why I bought this kit is because, you know, I bought a lot of the um, Nolzor's paint sets, and that's the Army Painter, and their their paints are fine, but I just I find that Citadel's is a much better quality, and it's a little more expensive. Um, but it, the, it really makes a difference because I see when I take like up close pictures of my minis and it's like mostly army painter stuff like close up it looks kind of splotchy I don't know if that's like a that's like an experience thing on my end it probably is it's not all the paint but um <clears throat> I just find that you know I have this I have very similar browns and one's army painter and one is citadel and when I use the Citadel brown, it's actually a little darker. So I sometimes I want like a lighter brown, and I use the Army Painter. But if I if I look at them side by side, um, the Citadel does not look splotchy. So Citadel, that's the paint to use. And they have like every paint. I mean, there's like Vallejo and Army Painter. Everybody has every color imaginable. So. Wonder how much this music bleeding into the mic. I wanted to also listen to it, you know. This is uh, this is no copyright sounds top 100. I love these guys. I've been listening to the well these guys. It's just a it's an amalgamation of <clears throat> good royalty free music that I have, you know, unironically been listening to since like 2016. Like not I wasn't making videos or anything. It's just like this is just good music. I, like the fact that it was non copyright was like okay. I mean that doesn't mean anything to me now. But oh my god, now I love playing this stuff. I'm gonna need more blue on the palette. No one has asked me another question, by the way. I'm just talking to myself for those watching the VOD. <clears throat> um, wow, you gotta get really in. Really gotta get in there. That might be a, you know what? Is that a... No. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this right here is actually just a matter of me pushing it in more. I, I don't think it expects me to get that far in. Yeah. Before we go any further, let's get more blue out because I am just swiping the bottom. Yeah, that's probably enough. Finish this one up. Do the other one. <clears throat> this uh this this video that I'm well it's a it's a YouTube video with the no copyright sounds top 100 I think it's like six hours so great ever put this on while you uh oh you can do anything it's like one of those like you playing playing whatever shooter you play or um <clears throat> you're just studying <clears throat> there's most of them don't have lyrics. And then just like chill like this. It's cool. I could talk about, I could actually talk about this music all day. This guy's looking real good. This guy's looking super good. Just gotta get in, get in here, man. Just gotta get in there. Right into the rib cage there. Oh, and I'm out of frame. Okay, there we go. And I'll leave the buzz saw kind of blank because you know we're gonna that's gonna be straight black and I don't need to. <clears throat> I got the hands and it kind of I got the hands it bleeds into the um, bleed into the sword so I don't want to leave any prime spots open but yeah we're gonna be good there. All right, there's a second guy. Let's see with the blue. Actually, look, he looks pretty weird. They look weird just blue. Is that gonna make it better? There we go. Actually, no, it looks better when it's focused. Who would have thought? Yeah. <clears throat> so that's the just blue. <clears throat> Pretty cool. <clears throat> I definitely did not put him in the right spot on that base. He's like tripping. Tripping all over himself. Alright, last guy for the base coat blue.
Yeah, another thing for those of you that actually are thinking about painting. Um, I don't consider myself an artist at all. It's pretty, it's pretty simple to pick up. Um, it's just, there's, you know, it is a lot of practice. I think that any artist is going to tell you that, or anybody that, that paints is going to tell you that. It's a lot of practice, but, like, really, it's... <clears throat> unless you're getting, like, real detailed in depth, like you're submitting stuff for competitions, like you're really trying to wow your friends, it's, it, you know, you can walk away. You can, you can walk in with, like, real, really no artistic talent. Like, say you have a paint-by-numbers level of artistic talent, right? I would say you probably need that. And you can walk away not feeling like crap. Like, you know how you go to, like, a... What are those things called where you, um, you like get drunk and you paint, painting with a twist or whatever? You know how like usually it's like super easy and like it's meant for drunk people and you usually can walk away with like a painting that you feel all right about, even though you're not a painter and you got drunk. That's what mini painting is. If you know, on the base level, <clears throat> I'm not trying to completely diminish it, but like, I mean, definitely what we're doing today. That's what this is because we're just, this is just going to be the basic stuff. Um, so, you know, if you're hesitant because you're not sure about your painting level, uh, I hope that I'm a good example that anyone can do this. Um, you know, any, anyone that's willing to kind of look up what tools they want to use and, and, you know, what they, what, what their end game is, you know, you're trying to play, you're trying to just get better, paint for other people. Mm-hmm. <laughs> This head is in place. This guy, this guy isn't swiveling at all. Now this was a proper push, right there. That's that's locked in. All right, so here we go. I really like the XYZ Unions video you recently posted. It recently showed it really showed things to look out for when playing the deck. I've been wanting to get the Moth cards. Those Parasite cards are about 20 bucks. Yeah. <clears throat> Luckily, Moth isn't the, the strongest right now, but God, it's still so fun for me. I, I just played it at a remote tournament yesterday. <clears throat> it's so fun for me just because I love drawing the cards. Drawing cards is so fun. And just like double, you know, the double whammy Moth is fun. When it hits the... But, like, it's not fun like you feel guilty anymore. Because now, like, you know... Like, I lost the TP Warrior last night. You know, it's it, like, you, you can get around it. It's not, like, stupid. <clears throat> but, yeah, I, I lucked out because I got those cards... Um, months ago, I released a video that was like, Here's my trade binder. I'm looking for parasites and cocoons. And, you know, I really wanted to build that deck physically. And I got connected with the right people that had that stuff. And that worked out for me. Um, just because I found that I had like a lot of, I had a lot of cards laying around, I have a lot of cards laying around that have value. <laughs> you know, you look at like, uh, how many Night Beams do I have? I don't even know. King of the Skull Servants, um, <clears throat> Arcana Knight Jokers and Blue Eyes Ultimates. It's like that stuff builds up. Even the, the Tournament Pack Dark Magician Girls, which I actually gave away in uh, the New Year video. <clears throat> so, that's kind of how I got those. But XYZ Unions, I played that, that was in, uh, that was in Speed Duel League's Win a Box. I played against that guy, and uh, yeah, I thought it was great because, you know, it's funny. When I was starting out, I always thought that my match videos had to be like, if there was a horrendous misplay, then it was not publishable. Like you couldn't do it, you know, <clears throat> like it, because I didn't know how the, I didn't know how res the reception would be, you know. But I got over that quickly. Now, in fact, the reason why I made that video is because of some of the mistakes I made, you know. And I think that you know, sometimes it's nice to remember that not everyone is freaking perfect playing speed duel you know a lot of the people i interact with like uh lucas gaylord for example who's like a pro the guy's an online monster and sometimes sometimes when i'm shooting those videos i have to pretend that i'm speaking to um 
like my college friends that are that are just as dumb as me with that stuff and not to somebody like Lucas. <laughs> Otherwise, I clam up, you know. <clears throat> but I, yeah, I, I think that that's a great. I hope to do more of those. You know, where it's like a, just kind of an analytic, like what happened, and like this is something that people are playing against a lot. <clears throat> so might as well talk about it and, and identify the trends. Like um, even the that initial the initial dump all their cards onto the field and get the XZ or whatever it is and set the back row. I, I, if, if you listen to the podcast with, I think, Terra Master, <clears throat> he, that's where I learned that, you know, oh, that means they're setting up for Union Scramble. I was like, oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. And it was a podcast with Terra Master or Cursive. I can't remember. Um, all right, these guys are all blue, I think. <clears throat> but, yeah, little things like that you learn. And uh, I hope to put more stuff like that into videos. Because uh, I think that that's cool. And, yeah, it seemed like it was received pretty well. Oh, my gosh. A couple more pieces here. Table ready. All right. We got three blue gentlemen over here. <clears throat> Oh my gosh, are we done with the blue? <clears throat> Guys, we might be we might be done with the blue. Wow, this is really easy. This is this really is that easy, huh? <clears throat> I would want I'm, I'm almost saying I'm almost thinking that this video that this video this live stream is uh, probably like three quarters over, <laughs> just because of the unless there's a lot of going back and forth over here, um, and me just being like, are, am I sure that is this done? Um, <clears throat> so let's get this guy back up let's load up the abaddon black i love seeing the misplays too it helps me feel human too yeah I, likewise man <clears throat> like i said when i when i started i was like i have to appear as like this person that's flawless you know <clears throat> not the case not so and you know it's something that i tell people that want to get started with like making their own stuff too it's like my my first thing is like, don't feel like you have to know everything. Just don't, please. You're gonna, you're gonna get, you're gonna doubt yourself. You're gonna tweak videos endlessly, um, re-record. You're, and you're gonna, you know what? You're gonna look at it and you're gonna think it's not good enough and not put it out. You don't have to know any everything. Um, you know, and and just, you know, just shoot your shot. Just do it. You know. Uh, what, what do I want to use this? I was toying with this brush. I think I'm gonna use this. This is like a Michael's brush here use for the Abaddon Black. It's just less, uh, you know, less ground to cover. It's like mindlessly shaking paints. Where'd I put? Okay, there we go. Abaddon Black. <clears throat> yes, sometimes dueling book matches are so slow, so having you be able to go through it quickly with comments is awesome. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I agree. It's at least, you know, dueling book, I will I will say, for like a video like that, it's really nice to that it's on dueling book because you can pause, fast forward very, very easily. And, uh, you know, all the cards are right out there. You can hover over cards, which is great. I remember before I realized that there was a match history feature on Dueling Book. I literally, like, recorded the matches that I wanted to then later go back and commentate. And then I would just, I would be at the mercy of the speed and my, of, of the video software I was using instead of, like, the pausing. <laughs> I figured that out quickly. All right, Abaddon Black. So what we're painting here is we're painting... The buzz saws and the guns. So this guy's got a buzz saw and a gun. All right, let's see what that looks like. This feels a little liquid to me. Let's see how this looks on the model. Hmm, that's a little liquid. Maybe I want to take that right out of the pot. Oh boy, that is that is <clears throat> that is really uh. really thin all right uh, I mean it's black go over with another coat too but it is very thin is the whole thing black Oops. yep handling everything all right Only thing that we are leaving not black is the hand. Sorry if my uh, 
my mic volume keeps spiking all over the place. I haven't checked the levels, but I, I do realize that I'm leaning in. I got the right here. Hello, Blue Yeti, right there. Although I love the new headset I got. That's great. But it just didn't feel like a... I like having the standing mic sometimes. This one's going to be kind of hard to see for you guys on camera. In fact, this is a good learning experience to take away because, you know, I think that I should... I should have the camera kind of like facing me because I notice a lot of times it's like, what's he doing? You know, I, I think that every stream I've done for painting, the setup has been different because I'm still just trying to figure out what works. Yeah, this black is really liquid. What's up with that? Sometimes the wet pal works a little too much. And just kind of kiss around the tip of the gun there. That's going to be the gold. But we don't need to go hard there. Don't want to paint over the hand. And, you know, it looks... I can show it up in the camera here in a second, but... It, it really looks like... It really doesn't look that... That kind of different from the blue. It's just so they're they're just both very kind of dark. Let's see how this looks in a second. All right. Yep. Don't roll away on me. Can we uh? Can we please focus? Uh, which way am I going? Okay. Yeah, so you see the black and the, and the blue there. <clears throat> um, <laughs> Alright, let me... Yeah, we're good there. Cool, that's it. That's it for the... That's all the black you need on these? Yeah, it's crazy. This is going to be real fast. This is the grenade guy. <laughs> the grenade guy that's so off base. <clears throat> Hey, Kabuzi, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for tuning in, man. Great questions. Have a good one. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> one buzz saw to do here. Left this one pretty blank. Didn't even cover it with the blue. Wow, yeah, look at that. Do you see that? Look at, do you see the streakiness? Like, that is, that is a, that is the sign of a liquid paint. Like, very liquid. Look at that on the palette. It's just like, you see how it's kind of graying out right there? What's going on it's very i don't think i shook it well enough you know and i'm almost tempted to take it right out of the pot here well actually you know what you you just you do a few more strokes and it, it figures itself out luckily it's black so it's like even if it's liquid it's still gonna you know it's black so it's still gonna cover fairly well um but yeah i think i'll go over that again do, 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 do. Yeah, I might just, you know what, honestly, last piece, I think that I just said a whole thing about you don't want to take it right out of the pot because it's too chunky. <clears throat> but um, I'm going to break that rule temporarily because this is some liquid black. I, you know why? I think it's because this is, so this is the one that didn't come with the set. I mean, the, the set does come with an Ebonon black, but this is the one that I used that I had in my drawer for a while. And uh, I don't know, like just sitting there for a while, it might have shifted this is much better luckily there's no real detail on this part of the the sword here um just like the little buzzer teeth at the end so this guy's got grenade and melee um and shoot looks like there's a couple of actually a couple pieces of the arm and that needs the blue so i'll, I'll come back on that 
Oh, get that little hilt. There we go. <clears throat> the words of Master Duncan Rhodes, two thin coats. Yeah, I love Duncan. <clears throat> Duncan Rhodes Painting Academy. <clears throat> you know, I although I do watch stuff like his stuff, and then I'm, I'm like, oh my god. Like, what am I doing? <laughs> he is a master. Sometimes I get discouraged looking. Sometimes, I mean, anyone can get discouraged looking at someone like Duncan, but he paints great stuff. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I like him. And who's the other mini painting YouTuber that I, that I watch? Um, I've actually never seen him paint. I just watch. He's the talking head. What's his name? Um, it's the, it's the uh, older guy with the beard and the fez. <clears throat> can't remember his name but I, I watch his stuff and he is just mostly talking about it, the hobbies and uh, I like his style of videos he takes like a, what is his name <clears throat> why is it why am I blanking on that name um, but he like takes kind of viewer questions and then just like turns it into its own video and I'm like that's a that's a genius idea he probably gets it because he streams I think too and when he and he probably paints on stream I don't see those but he probably gets a whole bunch of questions on stream, and then he takes all those questions, turns them into videos. Genius. I actually did that with one of my videos. Uh, um, <clears throat> the video from a couple months ago, or maybe it was last month, that was like, can you use regular speed duel cards? or regular, regular Yu-Gi-Oh cards in speed duel, where I go in, that's like, hey man, you know, Long story short, no one's probably going to give you any hard times at Speed Duel. That was a viewer question on Twitch. What is that guy's name? That's going to bug me if I don't. <clears throat> I got to do this guy justice. Um, Tabletop Minions. That is the guy. That's the other painting guy I watch. Although he's more of a talking head. Um, yeah, I'm just touching up blue here because I found some spots that, like, just kind of the under, unders, here we go. Ah, yes, the Pachow. Yeah, he's the Pachow guy. He's the guy where, like, halfway through all his videos, he's like, Pachow, check out my other videos. He's a genius. So smart. Yeah, I like, I remember I found him, I don't know, four months ago, binged. Oh, he's so bingeable. Yep, the Pachow guy. All right, that's enough touch up there. <clears throat> Move the death note in a little bit more. Huh? All right. So this guy's good with his weapon, the grenade. We can pull out a green for that grenade. God, are you kidding me? I literally, like, as soon as I pick it up, I find another spot. I mean, I guess that's like... Does anyone else feel this way when they're... Painting their minis. The curse of picking it up and then as you go to set it down on the table and start the next thing, you like catch that. Oh my god, look at that! Like just under. Uh, how do I get angle it? This is great. <laughs> how did I miss that? I've been painting this thing forever. Yeah, there's always a spot. Always a spot. That's. Ooh. You know, funny enough, the on the minis where I like paint it like eight colors, there I usually don't miss a spot because everything is so calculated. You know, every color, every spot is a different color. I mean, like there are enough details on this armor where you know you could do little white bands, little gold, little light blues, white skin. I mean, you know, all, thinking about I, seeing all the highlight potential here is is pretty cool. Um, all right. <clears throat> One more for the black. Stay there. All right, this guy's got a gun and a, and a blade. Um, I'm going to pull this right out of the pot. Because look at that. That is runny. That is so runny. And I have a friend that yells at me about overloading my brush. Which, yeah, I'm very guilty of. All right, let's see how this looks. Yeah. 
still, uh, you know, still looks kind of thin, but much better initial. Shake it up. Da, 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 da. Okay, get that hilt. Okay. Looking good. Yeah. Nice and simple. Nice and simple. Like I said, I was thinking about doing one of these. Because um, <clears throat> I have Great Citadel. Like, I have a Great Citadel orange and green. <clears throat> and I remember when I painted those Minotaurum armored containers, I did like one blue, one green, one orange. <clears throat> and it was cool because the way the dirt was on them and, and everything, it was like very different for each one. Different you know, complement colors, and that was pretty cool. But for this one, I'm just going straight kit because I, I just wanted to see <clears throat> how long this one would take me. Wow, that, that whole side is gray. Come on now. Plus, if I ever actually want to use these in a, um, in like a war game or a skirmish or, or whatever, um, probably want them all to be the same color. So... That should be good for the black, but lo and behold, there are some spots I need the blue. I need, I think this was, this must have been the last one that I <clears throat> painted with the base coat because it's, there's a lot of gray here. I think that that was just not enough paint on my brush. Yeah, still haven't even used like an eighth of this pot, I'm telling you guys. Or maybe I've used like an eighth. Alright, this guy's hand here needs a little love. Right here. Oh, is this a song I don't like? I think this is the one that gets trappy. Let's get that. Wait for it. Alright, we're good with the touch up here. Oh yeah, I hate this one. gonna get easier and easier and easier and easier <clears throat> all right all we need left is well, we can paint the bases gray and then <clears throat> obviously with the Warhammer minis you know the little terrain uh, kind of grass dirt things we can do I, I'm not gonna do that today <clears throat> um, but we're gonna do the gold on the uh, looks like gold on the shoulder pads gun tips and sigil white on the little like horseshoe on the shoulder all right, cool. Um, we can do, we can, should be good to do this one. Uh, what brush do I want? <coughs> <coughs> Take this one, also from Michaels. A little thinner tip, just, just a little thinner. There. <clears throat> Let's break out the Balthazar gold. So we want this. Okay. All 
Let's see what that looks like. Yeah. All right. Much darker. Now this one, oh, that is very dark on the palette. Look at that. That really should be all I need. <clears throat> Let's see how liquid this is. Because the other gold I have is pretty liquid too. <laughs> so what's going to be gold is... Oh, and don't want to obscure this detail here. All right, so it wants you to do the chest plate there. <clears throat> and then around the shoulders, which can be really tricky. Especially hard when you want to try and keep it in frame. This is usually the part where I like clutch it real close to me. But I definitely want to... This might be an old Duncan Rhodes Too Thin Coats because this isn't uh, this isn't covering the blue terribly well. But I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to press too hard. Spill it onto the shoulder pad. Okay, see that coming along there? Around the shoulder? Yeah, I over uh, I overdid that chest plate piece there. <clears throat> when I paint gold, I give it a brown undercoat. Hey, good call. Makes sense. Yeah, <clears throat> I'm coming on. I'm, I'm trying to touch really lightly on the shoulders, and and you can see kind of the blue through it. So it's just in this case, it's just a matter of a, a little bit of a reapplying. But um, that's a good call. Brown undercoat. And there are. I mean, well, actually, I'm trying to think of, you know, it's funny, a lot of the pieces that I do, I end up base coating some sort of brown, because uh, I do a lot of D&D &D stuff, and it's always like some sort of elf ranger, half-orc something, a lot of leather, you know, and it, it just makes sense to have the brown handy and ready. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna have to come back with the blue and touch that up. There's also so many other places I can put this gold, but let's just uh, let's stay true to the course here. Man, yeah, here we go. Okay. All right. Here's what we're looking at. Um, that left wing on the breastplate. I uh, play yeah you can see spilled a little bit onto the onto the armor there <clears throat> but there are just a couple places where it looks like there's this needs a little more don't want to push too hard but want to make sure that gold is really shining there and you know you can I mean even looking at the back the jetpack you can outline the gold and do all sorts of things there so this is definitely a this definitely won't be a, a, a totally finished product. We finished true to the box, but um, 
there's just so much potential here you know just think about dirt highlights where the lights coming from um, I think that's it for gold yeah that's it for gold on this one <clears throat> let's do the gold on all these <clears throat> then we'll come back through with the white then we'll paint the bases <clears throat> then we'll uh, wash it and we'll be done I don't think that there's oh well duh there's gold on the um there's no gold on the weapons with this guy but there's gold on the armor Come on now, there we go. You know that that we have that one bristle that you're like you're betting on to get that that piece there. There we go. <clears throat> Chest plate. Just want to make sure that those wings are even and out. And I didn't overload the brush this time, so this one looks nice. I don't have to. I'm not gonna have to come back to try and deglob like I just kind of low key did on that last one. <clears throat> All right, this guy's got a shoulder pad over here, one that holds an outstretched grenade, and then he's got the one here. Come on, need a little more gold there. You know, the gold could even kind of be a little rust. It's that dark. Almost not, not quite a copper, but it's pretty dark. Oh, my alarm's going off. When I overload my brush, that means it's time for me to take a break because I'm losing my patience. Agreed. And you know what? I am guilty of that on stream. <clears throat> Very guilty of that on stream. Because, uh, you know, always in the back of my mind is, you know, what is, uh, when does it stop being entertaining? When, you know, when you're doubling back and you're really trying to take it slow. So it's a real, it's, it's a real weird situation when you're streaming it because, you know, I think that I've probably, I've painted tons and tons of things. I've probably streamed like five times painting because... Every time I, I paint something and I'm like, oh, do I want to throw this on stream? I always end up being like, no, because I want to like take my time, <laughs> you know? <clears throat> I don't think that I'm rushing this one, but um, well, I'm not. I'm not rushing it too much. But yeah, I get it. The overloading the brush, yeah, usually means you guys take a step back. See, like I just, uh, yeah, I totally clipped that shoulder pad on that. So I'll I'll just come back with the blue on that one. And then we have the shoulder pad. Maybe, uh, actually, you know what? Maybe I can kind of approach this one a little lightly. It could be like the gold is fading, you know? Like these don't, I'm, I'm actually painting these like they're pristine, like fresh off the, fresh off the, the, the armor's right off the factory line. But definitely do some weathering. All right, that should be good for him. Both shoulders covered. Yeah. <clears throat> this guy armor and gun
Okay. Okay, that was actually pretty clean. <clears throat> Putting that one on. Hmm. And these shoulders. I'm trying to get around all the. This one's kind of like got an extra ridge, too. It's a little weird. There we go. Oh, that was a clean stroke. <clears throat> I prefer painting stuff to look like it just came off the factory assembly line. I think only once I paint something as rusty in 20 years just once. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Fair enough. I remember when I was painting the... I was painting those armored containers. Um, that was a field day. Because, yeah, like, this is this is kind of like my first... You know, I painted Age of Sigmar, D&D. &D. This is my first kind of like... This could be pristine new armor. Um, and it, it's cool. It's really cool. And you shine it up with the highlights, that's going to be awesome looking. Um, <clears throat> but I remember the, the armored container terrain. Oh, I had a field day because there was like no wrong answers with that one. You know, whoops, browns, three different browns. It was splashed all over the sides because, you know, it's in the desert. It's filthy. <clears throat> or like, yeah, you really just throw any color on it. Okay. We are good here. Hmm, maybe. Yeah. Huh, look at that. I'm actually finding. I'm finding pieces of prime. I'm finding primer on the base coat. <clears throat> Even this far in. Right here, right in the knee. And right here. All right, gotta head off to bed. Hey, good night, man. Thanks for uh, thanks for tuning in. All right, yeah, we're about we're about done here. We're gonna wrap it up because <clears throat> we really just we got the white left, and uh, and then we'll, we'll we'll call it. Oh, we got the white left. We'll do the bases. We'll call it good. And then uh, you know a lot of, there's gonna be a lot of touch up, and, and really there's just so much opportunity for highlighting. But I won't do that on this stream. I just wanted to kind of. Really just showing you guys that anyone can do this. Here's what it looks like. It's going to look awesome. You know. <clears throat> it really is like a paint by numbers thing. Uh, at this level. Alright. What? Is this brush clean? Get that gold out of this brush. We'll use the same brush here that we just used for the gold. And we're opening the, the Corax white. Now this one, look at that. So we were talking about <clears throat> liquid or really thin. I don't know if you can see the, you can see a chunk in there. That's chunky. So this is where <clears throat> the, the, the wet palette comes in, you know. Like a little, uh, it's like blue cheese. Put that right in there. Let that kind of mix in with the water under the parchment sheet here and that should be all we need really <laughs> all 
All right, so what we're gonna do with this white is there's like a, there's a sigil on each side and each shoulder and we are, this brush is so overloaded. We are going to, <laughs> we are going to not overpaint this. It's just such a, it's such a stark contrast where if you make a mistake, it's pretty apparent. It almost looks like a free-form, free-formed piece. It's pretty cool, but um, how do I want to go about this? There we go. I'm trying to keep this in frame for you guys too. Yeah, always ad adapting and adjusting the stream setup for the next time. Whoops! All right, we'll come back to that. Ooh, man, a couple a uh, couple misses there. You can see there's the it's a it's an like an X with four arrows, but I actually splashed something a little bit there. I do like the stark contrast though. And then this one's kinda like the omega symbol. Yeah, <clears throat> um, yeah, the Omega symbol there. Mm, yeah, so this definitely gives, it's like a freeform vibe, but it's definitely spilled onto the shoulder pads. We're gonna come back with the blue with a really thin one and we'll clean that up. But that's, you know, so this is actually, <clears throat> from the box standards, besides the base and the wash, which will apply, this is a completed, uh, this is a completed Marine. Looks pretty good, right? <clears throat> For like the bare minimum, it looks pretty good. I don't even think we need to redip our brush. I think that we can just, man, this Omega symbol is a pain though. Yeah, we do need to redip. It's like draw a perfect half circle. Um, oh wow. Oh wow. This is where uh, the patience wears thin. Wow, that's... Mm. <laughs> Fix that in post. Fix that one in post. Yeah, come get it. Get, what you do is you get the brush with the blue and you just sweep in. There is a, there's a little ridge. There's a little ridge there. Right under it. Clean that up. You got the white on everywhere you need the white. You just come back with the blue now. And this was, uh, yeah, they both have the, uh, like the triangle or the arrows X on one shoulder and then the Omega on the other. There we go. Just gotta slow it down a little. Yeah, that's not that one, that's not bad. That one's not bad. <clears throat> really excited for this white for other projects. <clears throat> really nice to have a Citadel white. <clears throat> All right. Uh, actually, let me take the newly loaded brush onto the X first. Cause Ah, shoot. A little splotchy there. <laughs> Ta-da! Yeah, well, hey, in the camera from this distance, looks like I did it right. And you know what? We'll take it. Give me a better Omega symbol this time, though. Mm -mm. 
Okay. <laughs> All right. Now, what we're going to do next. A couple other things and then we'll be done. Before I forget, I'm going to grab my green for grenade. <clears throat> this is the green I use for a lot of the goblins. Uh, this is the uh, Lauren Forest. <clears throat> use that later. For this guy we are going for the uh oh the astro granite for the base actually gonna be pretty easy to cover this base because you can see he's kind of like stepping around a lot of it which is cool thank you holy crap look at this opening this is like bleh. that is gunk you can definitely tell a different kind of pigmentation or something science like i pretend like i know what i'm talking about but you can tell it's like certain paints definitely need to be thinned than others oh god this is like a yeah this is chunky i mean it's astro granite sounds like a chunky kind of definitely sounds like a chunky paint yeah that's luckily there's no detail to cover up with the base actually you know what it's probably this is probably used a lot for bases or you know maybe some kind of weaponry that doesn't require a lot of detail there but we you know we thin that out just a little bit Okay, actually below the, the chunk you start to see kind of some of the true stuff. <clears throat> actually it might not might not hurt to have some of that glob on the base. Let's just let's just start spreading. Oh yeah. And this base is rigid too. Yeah, this is a um, this is very, not metallic, but a nice citadel gray, which is good. Got the underdark gray from the uh, underdark paint set, Nozor's Marvelous Pigments. And it's great, but like I said, the citadel, I just like the quality better. So it's nice to have the citadel gray too. All right. Yeah, it's like leaving little pieces behind, which is pretty, it's kind of cool, actually. I will paint through the, paint the sides, too. You can kind of see. Actually, almost, yeah, I mean, represents the terrain <clears throat> pretty well. I can hold him here. Then I can paint the sides. Grab him by the gun. There we go. Nice, good gray coat on that base. This is the guy with the grenade. So before we move off this guy, let's remember to uh, we'll remember to paint the grenade green. Wow, the texture on this one is unlike anything I have. It's pretty cool. Just like leaving little pieces as it goes. But you know what? It's also, I know that it's also the texture of weird because it's the texture of the paint but also the texture of the base it's like ridgy it rigid ridgy <laughs> getting late getting late yeah it's like leaving little pieces are coming off here all right <clears throat> while i have him Give me a little bit of the Lauren Forest green. I'm gonna. T I will take this 
Ooh, just, just a tad, just a tad bit, right out of the pot here. Okay, we're going for this grenade in the hand. Finish up this base around the sides. Oh, this is really making this brush pretty ragged, too. <clears throat> All right, two done. Last base, and then we will uh, wash, and we'll be good. <laughs> Where is that astro granite? You know what? Let's see what this looks like just right on the base. Yeah, you can see it. The chunks, right? Not bad for like a base. Definitely leads me to believe that this is exactly what they had in mind for this color. Um, which makes me hesitant to use anywhere else, you know. I don't wanna I don't wanna touch up somebody's helmet with a gray and have it be like oh whoops there's globs everywhere it's like he's wearing a piece of the moon <laughs> all right yeah that one's gonna be a little gritty <clears throat> Grab the sides here. All right, and our three guys are done, with the exception of the wash. So, uh, for washing, let me, uh, well, first let me grab, was it this guy? This guy was the first guy we did, whoa, hello. <clears throat> this guy was the first guy we did with the white, and there are a couple, there's, there's a couple places that I definitely just want to touch with the blue. That kind of rounds it out much better. Easy, easy fixes, luckily, you know? And that patch looks good. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Let's wash. I think we're going to see the hairdryer one more time. I actually only saw it for the primer. Now we're going to see it for just making sure these guys are ready.
little touch up there. That's all that one needed. Oh, little, uh, yeah, I can't leave it like that. I actually covered a little white and gold that uh, was in the wrong place there. Okay. <clears throat> now we're ready for washing. <clears throat> Thank you, hair dryer. You are done. So, the Agrax Earth Shade. Take a look at these guys now. Very, still very, still pretty vanilla, you know? So this should shade it. Wow, it looks really bright in this camera, but I swear this blue isn't that bright. It's, it's really earthy and, man, the camera is, I think the, is the camera like auto-correcting with like reds? Maybe it's the matte, I don't know. <clears throat> All right, so we see we open the Agrax Earth Shade. We can see it's like, you know, it's like a little, it's like a cup of coffee. Because it's very liquid and you'll see, for anyone that hasn't seen a wash applied before, you'll see kind of how this works. <clears throat> so let's get some and we'll put it, you know, just look how it is on the palette, right? See how liquid that is? It's very brown. All right. So we're going to splash this all over the model. You're going to see how this looks, all right? This gonna find the natural shadow it's definitely gonna earthen it a little bit yeah that's that's nice Yeah, this this gives it like that. What's a good that's a good analogy? Take take something and then give it like the Borderlands art style. <laughs> just like really thick, kind of like it's just darker, grittier, thick outlines, little telltale, you know, kind of telltale Borderlands. Yeah, just I mean, just on the chest alone, the chest piece thing that sigil you'll see. It's like so much darker. Like here, can we get a comparison? Right. Um, I wish that this focused. Wow, not even once will it focus. Come on. Wow, all right. <clears throat> Come on, focus. Well, yeah, there we go. See the difference a little bit? This is like a Buzz Lightyear, and this is kind of like a more gritty. All right, let's get the other two done. You can see, like, in the process of painting this with the wash, I'm sure that on screen it doesn't even look like anything's happening. It's because it's just, it's pretty subtle. I'm actually going to need more. Uh, right here.
I love it. Sometimes, you know, the shade gets kind of in their eyes. It gives them, like, that shadow eye. It's pretty cool. <clears throat> All right. Yeah, the, the shade almost kind of gives it that dirty look anyway, you know? It's kind of like you can put it right over that white and it really just takes it down a notch. Ooh. But then if you really, if you decide, you know what, I want that kind of factory white, that fresh off the, the conveyor belt, you know, white there, you can just go back. But this really kind of darkens it. It's pretty cool. All right. We, and we did it. <clears throat> That's all of them. All right? <clears throat> okay. This is our uh, finished product. Cool. What'd that take? How long has it been? Two hours? Yeah, that's about what I thought. Two hours. Two hours for these three. Still not fast. That fast, huh? Yeesh. I think that I... Well, actually, you know what? I think that it took me three hours for three at one point uh, when I was doing that Goblin Army. So, <clears throat> a little faster. <clears throat> Obviously, we're just dealing with like four colors and there's just so much detail and, and highlight that can be added that I'll, I'm planning on looking at, but we got the basic done, like looking at like the box. We got, we got done what it, what it wanted us to get done with the paints and you know, everything that was in the kit, which is cool. And we got through assembly. Thank goodness. Right. All right. So, uh, that's it guys. Thanks for tuning in. Um, it's a Twitch VOD. So my Twitter should be below. YouTube should be below. You guys seen this on the VOD. It's probably, uh, this was, what is this, Sunday night, so you're probably seeing this the following Saturday or so. But, um, hope you guys enjoyed this, and, yeah, that's it. I will catch you guys later. Is there anybody I can raid with my one person? Two people? How many people we have? Oh, yeah, no, we'll just send it. Alright, guys, I'll catch you later. Take it easy.